Good day everyone, this is Luke Seam from LukeSeam.com and I'm an Australian photographer. So there's been some new HDR software that's hit the market. I've been playing with it for a while now and I wanted to sort of share why I think it's one of the most advanced HDR apps on the market and you know show some of the cooler features of it. Before I jump into the software, let's have a look at what you can create with it. So I've got 10 images here I've made and starting here is the Sydney Opera House. Beautiful sunset, beautiful light and got some great reflections. This one's from Amsterdam and was able to get all these beautiful colours in the water and see right into the canals. We've got a shot here from Dubai and the towering buildings that sort of dwarf you. Uh, this is a interior, the QBB. Um, I've got this cityscape from the Gold Coast up in Queensland, Australia. Uh, beautiful light. I also wanted to show how you can use Aurora in the daytime, which is actually quite difficult with other HDR apps. Um, so here's a sunset in the Sydney Royal National Park. Just love the way the light bounces down onto the ocean there. Yeah, HDR works great with landscapes. It also works great with cityscapes, um, this one here in Sydney, the Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, during blue hour and sunset. Uh, night shots, also great. So here's one in Kyoto, a little alleyway. And this one's from the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam. Had a great time there. So let's just go through uh, some of the features on the app and yeah, play. So I've just got these three bracketed images from my Sony a7R that I wanted to use as examples. Uh, it's just shot down on the rock pool there on Bronte. So I'll just load them up. So starting off, I wanted to show layers and the way we can blend and source them. Let me begin by showing you where the layers panel is over here on the right and we're just going to add a new layer and I'll call this um, sky. What I want to do here is show you how you can use uh, one of your original source images. So we go to source and then here are the three images I showed you in Lightroom. So we'll just pick say the zero and we're going to be using this for the sky. Now it's a little um, desaturated, but that's all right. Just go to the layer blend and we can choose our blend mode and just change that to soft light. And bam, you can see we've got a beautiful sky now. The next feature I wanted to show, which is awesome, is the brush. And you can kind of see it here already. If we just go to the brush panel up here, you can see how we're able to control its opacity, how soft the edges are, as well as its size. So what I'm going to do here is paint in our sky. So if you see in the middle of the brush, there's a little minus sign. We want that to be a plus sign. So we'll just change that to a plus. And if you hit command minus and plus, together that will zoom in and out of your image. I'm actually going to use the bracket keys to make my brush a bit smaller and I just want to paint in the sky here. So we just go a nice little stroke across like this and we'll do one more for good measure because it's just at around 70%. So there just going back to zero is a way you are able to use different source images and yeah, blend them however you like, different ways and bring them into your HDR image. The next feature I wanted to show was the ability to control a preset's opacity. So if we just go back to, to our original image, I'm going to add another layer and let's go to realistic HDR presets. So Aurora HDR comes with a bunch of awesome presets. And one of the features that I love is down here, this slider, which allows us to control its opacity. 
at 100% all the way down to zero. And each preset has heaps of little parts to it. So we have all these changes to the details, changes to the color, and all of these get controlled by this opacity slider. Nifty, right? What we can also do is stack our presets. So say I like all the detail in this one, but I also want to add a bit of glow from this one. What we can do is, so let's start with this neutral one. Over here in our layers, we click this plus sign and we can add another layer. Let's just call it neutral and we'll click on neutral. Now, next up, we're going to add the dreamy layer. So plus and then type in dreamy. Uh, we're just going to left click on this. But I think this is all too extreme. Uh, so what I've noticed is a good way to do this is to drop down the opacities on each preset. So let's drop this one to say 50. You can also do it up here. And then also drop the dreamy one to about 50. We've combined a couple of presets and I think that looks great. From here you can also add a new layer and continue working on the image. Next up I wanted to show you how they've added the luminosity mask feature to their software. So if we just go back and start with uh, empty layer again and I'll add a new layer, we'll just call it luminosity. Uh, so next up I want to right click this layer and we shall say create luminosity mask. Now that will just process, what it's doing is reading all the data within the photo and it's just picking out the brightest elements or brightest pixels in the photo. You can see here next to this the mask is created and it looks like a little black and white image and that's cool. So we can also see the mask by going up to layers and clicking show mask. And where it's red that's where it's most concentrated and where there's no red that is where the mask is not being used at all. So you can see in the sky that it is quite bright. So I'll just hide that again. What I want to show you how you can use these in a cool way is so by selecting a preset, let's go to one of Trey's ones. Uh, let's click on this one, first time I did mushrooms. I mean, it's a great name, but yeah, it's just definitely very extreme within these bracketed images and I wouldn't want to combine it over the whole thing. We'll left click here to show you the difference. So it's just adding that preset to the brightest area of my photo. So another way you can use these luminosity masks is to invert them. And then I'll be just working with the darker areas of the photo. So I'll show you how to do that. So we go plus sign again. Let's call this luminosity, luminosity inverted. And I'm going to paste the mask from the previous one. You can see they're identical. Next up, what I want to do is invert the mask. You can see it's extremely bright and it's because there is a lot of dark within this photo. So how about we select another one of these of Trey's presets that we want to use. So this one here, I think it will work well for Baby in the Corner. That will really brighten up the darker areas of the photo. So I'll just click on that and let's use the slider to see the changes. So you can see the before and the after. That's using an inverted luminosity mask to brighten up my foreground. This is a cool new feature which allows you to do exactly what it's called. But yeah, it's not in anything else. For example, I would like to darken up the sky a bit. You can see by sliding it to that side or it brighten up the sky. I think we will brighten it a bit. 
So the bottom, the same thing, we can darken it or brighten it up as well. Uh, the blend, you can see, you can make it large blend or a small blend. And shift works like this, bringing it up and down. They added another cool feature here called the rotation, which just swings it around. So yeah, there you have it. There are some of Aurora's best features. Um, you can see McFun tried to create an end-to-end -end piece of software where HDR photographers could bring in their, all their images in and then just sort of come out with their completed product. And I also think that the fact that they're offering things that no other HDR software can give you, uh, it just puts them head and shoulders above the rest. Pricing-wise, I think uh, that it's very fair. Um, there's a standard version for around $60 in the App Store, then you've got your Pro versions and then other versions with extra packages and goodies just for coming in at around $100. So, I mean, if you sold a print or two, you've already made your money back on this software and as you can see, it's just got a whole bunch of things that you can do from beginners by one-click presets all the way for advanced users to dive in deep and really play with all the settings. So yeah, there you have it, some of the cool stuff from Aurora Pro.